So, um, questions? We had a we had a question, right? So the so the evidence there was really his when he when he when he quotes the passage from the Bible that's his evidence, right? So you know the evidence is really something you point to, right? And and he's pointing to that passage in the Bible. It's not enough to point to it though. Um, you have to somehow interpret it. You have to sort of explain you know what's significant about that. And so that's what he does, right? So he he point you know he had the 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 the, the quote from the Bible, but then after he had the quote he also then gave us this explanation of how to make sense of that quote. Right? And it was, it was an explanation that was different than, than Hobbes' explanation. Right? So even though they're using the same evidence, they're coming to different um, conclusions. They're, uh, they're, they have different analyses based on the difference in their warrants. Right? And so that's why the warrants is really important, because you can, even if you have this, two people have the same evidence, because they have different warrants, they're going to come to different conclusions. I mean, you know, it, it's, it, I guess in this case, Hobbes and Warren don't have drastically different conclusions in the sense they're both affirming that God taught um, Adam language. Um, however, in using the different warrants, um, they're actually giving us a kind of a, a different account of what language is. Right? Uh, you know, if, if for Hobbes, language is a sort of a process of creating correct definitions. Uh, for, for Warburton, language seems to be a process of creating figures of speech. Right? Um, so, uh, other, other, other questions on this part? No? So, uh, let's just go through th some of my questions for a moment. How did language originate according to the theorists who judge from the nature of things rather than from revelation? So, the, the, these people that, that Warburton is arguing against, yeah? That people kind of like mutually needed each other and so therefore they like agreed upon signs that would stand for things. Good, good. So people needed help from each other and they mutually agreed upon signs that would serve as the, as the signs for their ideas. Okay, good. And, and, and what's important about it is that um, this is a theory that, that, um, that tr tries to make language a kind of a something that you can deduce generally, just from the idea of, of, of being human, in a sense, right? Good. Um, so why does Warburton think that uh, God taught language to the first man? Yes? Okay, good. So he's saying that there's a passage in the Bible that shows this image of God teaching Adam it's not saying explicitly that God taught Adam language, but it's giving us this image of that teaching scene, uh, and that's his, that's his reasoning, reasoning for how to read that, um, that Bible passage. Good. Um, how is Warburton's method of reading the Bible different than that of Hobbes? Anybody? Yes? Okay, uh, so, so, so it's not so much, I guess, so, so Hobbes uses logical inferences, Warburton uses figures of speech. It's not so much that Warburton uses the figures of speech that, uh, as so much as he's sort of looking at the language that he sees as figures of speech, right? So, so it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, Warburton... Does he use figures of speech? I guess he uses some figures of speech, but he's, what's important about the Bible passage is that he's, he's interpreting that language that he sees as figures of speech. Yes? Yes, yes. No, so yeah, what I, I, think, I think you're right, that he's also using logic to do this, right? So, so he's got a, I mean, he's, I guess you could say he's got a mixed method, right? So, you know, he, he, he started out with these, with these rational reasons as well. So he's using both. He's using sort of, um, yeah, logical inferences, reasoning, but he's also um, pointing out the way figures of speech work and that that's a legitimate way to use language, right? Okay, good. All right. Questions? Other questions? 
Yes? So basically then, uh, Hobbes is saying that you shouldn't use figures of speech for language, but um, Orger and <coughs> Yes. Yeah, so if you recall, Hobbes was always very suspicious of figures of speech. He says that that's really a, a kind of form of abuse of language, right? Um, especially, I mean, you know, figures of speech were not as bad as sort of outright, outright error, I suppose, but he, he kind of classes it in the same category as error. Uh, whereas Warburton is not seeing that as error. He's really just seeing it as a legitimate use of language, and this is how we need to be able to read language. Yeah, good. Okay. Yes? Oh, so what is a figure of speech? Um, I guess a figure of speech is any kind of language in which um, you're not look, you, you're not, what's important is not the literal meaning, but the way uh, the words are being used in a kind of, um, I guess, you know, traditionally there's different figures of speech, you know, like metaphors and similes. When you're using language not literally but figuratively as a, as a kind of image of, of what you want to say. So like, you know, a metaphor is when, when, you, when, you, when you describe one thing and you're actually talking about something else. Uh, a simile is, is like that, but you use the word like, this is like that, right? Uh, or, you know, like a personification where you, where you take like s uh, an object and you treat it as if it were like a, a person. You know, there's these, all these different types of figures, or, or metonymy when you take one piece of a thing, whatever, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a thousand sails for a thousand ships, right? Taking one piece of a thing to mean the whole thing. Those are all different types of figures of speech, right? Where you, where you, where you can't take those words literally, you have to take them figuratively as, as images. Right? Okay. And so Hobbes is always saying, you know, that, 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 that it, that's a sort of an abuse of language to do that, if you recall, right? Because it's, it's confusing. You've got contradictory phrases, right? You, he, had, he had this thing about inblown virtue. How could virtue be blown somehow, right? You can't do that. Um, and, and, you know, Warburton's response, well, yeah, you can't do that, but of course people use language in this way to, to communicate things figuratively. Right. Okay. But so, so that's the, the kind of op that's the basic opposition we have between Hobbes and Warburton. It's and it's an opposition that's going to go through this whole course actually between lots of different writers. Yes. So Hobbes thinks that like uh, using figures of speech is like an error. Is that because like it's more likely that I feel like that assumes that like the other person will misinterpret the figure of speech. But if the other person uh, comprehends the figure of speech, would it still be considered? So, um, so, yeah, so, so, so the question is, if, if somebody comprehends the figure of speech correctly, then is it still considered an error? Well, no, I guess it wouldn't be, but, but what, Ho what Hobbes, Hobbes doesn't say that, that, that figures of speech are, 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 are errors, but he says that they're ambiguous, that they're not clear, right? And that's what he has, a, you know, that, that's what he doesn't like, right? Um, and so, you know, what he wants is these clear definitions where, you know, everything is, is clear and it only means one thing, and then you can kind of build a whole system based on that. If you use figures of speech, obviously it won't be as clear. People can interpret it in different ways, and that's what he's, he's worried about. Yeah. Okay. Yes? What do you mean by saying that the whole explanation of the sentence is part of the um, so, so we had like in that phrase, uh, so in that passage, um, so, um, basically, this part we have in 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 red there, right? So he quoted the pass. He quotes the passage up up here, and then in red, he's got this explanation for how we're supposed to read that passage. That's essentially his warrant, right? Or we have to kind of like, when we read that, we can kind of extract the warrant from there. Right, in the sense that that his that's his explanation. This is how he's reading the evidence, um, in order to bring us back to his claim, and that's essentially what a warrant is. Right, is is how to read the evidence to bring us back to the claim, and that's where we'll find the warrant in that in that text there. And you know, and what I'm indicating is is that an important part of his warrant is that figures of speech need to be taken seriously as a mode of information. Right? And that's kind of what he says, right? It says, here by common figure of speech, the historian, instead of directly relating the fact that God taught men language, represents it by showing God in the act of doing it 
in a particular mode of information. Right? So it's, it's this mode of information that's, that's not a, like a definition. It's a figure of speech. But it doesn't mean that it's, that, it's, that it's somehow not a form of information. It's just, it, it works differently. And so that's, I think, I think that's, yeah, that's what I'm calling his warrant here. Right? 